Auburn spring game is in the books and well, Cam Coleman is the best thing really to come out of it. Zach yes. Blackerby locked on Auburn joining me here on the show. The A-Day or spring game, whatever you want to call it, on Saturday, year two for Hugh Freeze and the Tigers. Let's start with Cam Coleman. This guy Please. looks like he's ad, ad, as advertised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the best, if not the best, wide receiver in this uh, in this recruiting class, early enrollee, and we've heard nothing but incredible things. And in fact, I got criticized a little bit from some of the the everydayers of Locked On Auburn. It's like Zach, you're hyping this guy up too much, and I'm like, maybe. I don't think so, but maybe. And I've been I've been waving the flag of like Auburn has never had somebody like Cam Coleman, and Auburn's had some pretty good football teams, but they've never had a receiver like Cam Coleman. And yes, it's a spring game. Yes, it's just a day. We call it a day down here, Spencer. But what he did drew like national attention this past Saturday. So, you know, just adjusting while the ball was in the air, some 50-50 balls where he's catching it one hand, pushing a grown man off of him and going into the end zone. Auburn's just never had a number one option like that since like Terry Beasley. I mean, it's been over 20 years. Spencer, I don't even know if you were alive when Terry Beasley was playing. I, I I can't say the name rings a bell for me personally. I've seen my fair share of Auburn football. I think the earliest name I could go back. Michael Dyer. Michael Dyer is a big name for you. Nope, that, that name doesn't ring a bell in any way, <laughs> shape, or or form. Uh, no, he, he, here's a here's a fun thing though about Cam Coleman. So you know he he wins offensive MVP as he should. He was the lone player to score a touchdown for Auburn offensively on Saturday. We go and, and you know we load up in the media room. We hear from Hugh Freeze. We're about to hear from Hugh Freeze and the main Auburn SID. She says, "Hey, we're going to hear from Coach, and then we're going to get players. Cam Coleman will be very brief. We've got to get him to prom." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Can you imagine being this kid who should be in high school? You have national, you know, attention, you know, every national college football outlet's tweeting about you. And then you go put on a tux and you go dance the night away at prom. I, I just think it's like it's Cam Coleman's world. We all just uh, we all just get to live in it. Uh, you know, I, I uh, very proudly logged a round of golf, 18 holes before every high school dance that I went to. That pales in comparison to, yeah, I was winning offensive MVP and had national media asking me questions at <laughs> Auburn football practice. And then I that's went right. back and then I went back to my prom. Gosh almighty, what that that's mm, that's just quality content there. That's but great. Cam Coleman can only be as good as the guy throwing him the football, Zach. And that's expected right. to be Peyton Thorne going into a day. You said you needed to see Peyton Thorne avoid the negative publicity. Did he accomplish that? I think so. I mean, I, I think regardless of what Peyton Thorne does, there's going to be a section of the Auburn fan base that say he didn't do enough. I almost think he could go undefeated this year, and Auburn fans would be like, in spite of Peyton Thorne, it's like, come on, <laughs> come on. I mean, I think we need to have proper expectations for what this offense can be. And I think Peyton Thorne, he's been in college football for a long time. We kind of know what he is. I do think he's better than he was a year ago, and they've done things to help put pieces around him. Guys like Cam Coleman, Robert Lewis is a transfer wide receiver that you and I talked about when we previewed Auburn's 8 day game going into the weekend. He led Auburn in catches, had five catches for 70-something yards. It's like that's those are the kind of pieces you need to put around these quarterbacks that need a little bit of help. And, and I think Peyton Thorne is, is kind of in that tier of college quarterback. The O-line, I think, is going to be good enough. Can these pass catchers be good enough? And I think the scheme's going to be better with Hugh Freeze kind of putting more uh, more time and emphasis on it. So I, I thought Peyton was by far the best of the four quarterbacks. I think Hank Brown's going to be a really solid backup, and I, I think Holden Gurner's going to transfer when the portal opens next week. We'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think Peyton Thorne was okay. I think Peyton Thorne showed what you needed to see. And just a reminder, like Peyton Thorne wasn't a part of Auburn's program last spring and, and i think that stuff matters spencer yeah and I, I think going into this year auburn fans should probably have tempered expectations for peyton thorne as it pertains to the sorts of numbers that he could put up but the tigers win total over at FanDuel it is seven and a half if they're going to go over that number peyton thorne has to play good football but if he plays the way he's capable with Cam Coleman, with an offensive line and running game that was prolific in the SEC last year, should be good again this season for Hugh Freeze and company. Where can Peyton Thorne fit into the realm of SEC quarterbacks? 
I think if Peyton Thorne's a top half SEC quarterback, Auburn probably wins eight or nine games. I think it hits the over on the FanDuel side of it. But I don't really know his path to doing that quite yet. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna rank all the quarterbacks in the SEC, like he's not top ten, right? Like I, I don't think I can name seven SEC quarterbacks that I know Peyton Thorne is going to be better than. So he's going to have to kind of lean out over his skis a little bit. I think Q Freeze is really going to have to help implement an offense. Uh, more and more stories keep coming out of like how bad and how unorganized Auburn was offensively a year ago. And that's not on Peyton Thorne. And, and to some extent, it's on Hugh Freeze, but he put such an emphasis on recruiting. He hired a former head coach in Philip Montgomery to come in and lead the offense. But you're hearing more and more things about it. You're you're hearing players in, in public press conference type scenarios talk about how much more organized it is now than a year ago, and it's night and day. It's way simpler. Everything seems to make more sense, and they're doing things with intention, and they didn't do that a year ago. I mean, this is a guy who's just been thrown under the bus over and over and over again, including by Hugh Freeze pretty much every week of the season last year. I think the offense is going to make a whole lot more sense, and that's going to give Peyton Thorne an avenue to be a top half quarterback in the conference. What are the biggest questions still looming for Auburn or the biggest weaknesses that you saw that you know either confirmed your priors going into A-Day or you saw something that made you go, wow, I, I didn't think this was a problem, but this could be an issue in 2024 and maybe needs to be addressed in the portal? Yeah, the two biggest questions I had going into spring, the two biggest questions I had going into A Day this past weekend are still the two biggest questions that I have now. And Hugh Freeze addressed them both kind of without us having to ask or pry. But the receivers, like they're better than a year ago, but it's still not enough. They're going to have to add another receiver or two via the portal for depth. And I also think some guys are going to leave uh, when the portal opens next week. So wide receiver still needs to be better. And I think some of that will take care of itself with Cam Coleman. And then you know, Perry Thompson, the other five-star receiver, he's not on campus yet. You know, adding him going over the summer and into the fall, I think will help too. But they they need a little bit more firepower there. Can they add that via this portal window that's about to start? Then the other one's defensive line. And funny enough, the defensive line was surprisingly good on Saturday. I do think a lot of that, I don't want to take too much away from those guys because I do think they overperformed at least what I was expecting them to. And I don't want to take that away from them. But the way and kind of the nature and the setup of how 8A was, was structured, I, I do think it benefited the defensive line in regards to the offense really wanted to throw it. They didn't really want to put a whole lot of emphasis on, on running the football. It's very vanilla stuff. They were able to tee off a little bit. So they, they outperformed my expectations and a lot of people's expectations on Saturday, but still they, um, they need to add some big guys some big, big meaty boys on uh, on the defensive line once the portal opens next week. You know, I've always kind of lamented that vanilla means plain or boring or simple because vanilla itself it's is a great flavor. One. It's it's a great flavor, and you know, in vanilla ice cream, is it the strongest flavor? Maybe not, but it could be. If you throw like a little raw vanilla in there, suddenly you got something that's a lot more potent and and you know spicy, but in the sweet sense. Uh, of sorts. So vanilla yeah. has got a negative connotation. We here at Locked On College Football are working to change that and to keep you all as informed as possible. Zach Blackerby, Locked On Auburn, helping me out here today. Zach, thanks, man. Of course. Love you long time. Likewise. And uh, I've, I've got a question for, for the people out there. Did you know that there's some hype around Texas A&M this year? Have you ever heard that story in college football before? Have you, Zach? No, I've, I've, I've never seen it. Their win Nine. total... Mike Elko's not that good, folks. Well, on that note, let me just pose a question. Are they worth the hype? We're going to answer that after this. Nope.